Chancellor Feng, colleagues from Wuhan, Duke, and Kunshan who built this venture together, faculty, parents, DKU class of 2022, what an honor to speak at Duke's first undergraduate graduation. On a happy day in August of 2018, I spoke to you as you entered college. Do you remember? After eight years of planning and building, we had a campus, we had a faculty, and that day we acquired the last ingredient we needed to bring DKU to life. Brilliant, talented students, students with a pioneering spirit who, from all the colleges in the world they could have chosen to attend, were attracted to this new school's promise of global education and 21st century learning styles. Four years later, you did it. You rose to every challenge. You have made DKU known around the world through your achievements. And now you are ready to go stake out your, a bright future for yourself. Well done. But let's be truthful. Although you arrived successfully, the road was not as straight or smooth as we had in mind. Since China began emerging as a global superpower, we've all known that there would be elements of both cooperation and competition in its relation with the United States. DKU was conceived at the high watermark of the spirit of cooperation. A joint venture university is the perfect image of the ideal of engagement across bounds of difference. Since then, as we know, relations between these powers have become much more competitive, more distrustful on both sides along multiple fronts. But then, geopolitical divisions were suddenly compounded by a much more literal separation. As the COVID virus circled the world, economies and population centers shut down, doors were slammed closed to prevent the spread of the infection, cross-border travel was terminated by most countries, and having harmlessly traveled to celebrate a holiday, DKU students and faculty found themselves continents apart, unable to rejoin uh, the community they had so recently created. In years before the pandemic hit, the word disruption had become a word of high praise in American business circles. People talked as if most familiar businesses were suddenly just dull or dumb, and entrepreneurs were coming to disrupt everything, and we would soon be living in a disruptor's paradise of continual innovation. COVID has reminded us, unfortunately, that disruption is not always such a positive thing. COVID has reminded us, indeed, that disruption is very disruptive. Did ever a university have a harder time getting started than UDKU? In fact, the answer is yes. I went to Yale, a university that's now 321 years old. Yale is world-renowned now, but at its start, it had only a handful of students who were required to live in the home of the single faculty member in a remote rural town. When that first rector died, the school had no leader for a decade, and students uh, found the housing and teaching so bad that they threatened to leave. Eventually, this tiny college that had about 30 students disintegrated into three minuscule groups offering instruction in three widely separated towns. It didn't have its own building in which it could reunite until it had existed for 17 years. Our other speaker, Westlake President Xi, attended Tsinghua University. Not long after Tsinghua became a full-fledged university, it had to pack up and leave in face of the Japanese invasion of 1937, temporarily merging with three other schools to form a university in exile in Kunming. My point is this, universities have never existed outside of conflict and disruption. When there's serene expanse of lawn and water features, university, they make university campuses look like places of undisturbed reflection. But universities live in history, not outside of it, and so they necessarily partake of history's tumultuous changes. So far from being fragile blossoms that could only bloom in protected places, universities have survived all manner of challenges that seemed as if they would put an end to them. And preparing people who can survive and thrive in change is one of the key missions of universities. That brings me back to you, class of 2022. Things didn't work out as you expected when you arrived at TKU pre-COVID. Our ceremony this morning and evening puts the matter starkly. I'm addressing some of you live in Durham. I'm addressing you, some of you virtually in Kunshan. I'm addressing some of you who weren't even able to get to Kunshan for the, for, for the ceremony. You have been forced apart on the very day you should have been able to celebrate together. 
I don't underestimate the disappointment and frustration you have felt. I'm sorry for it. But I will tell you with confidence, these disruptions will not keep you from gaining the benefit you sought when you made your choice of college. You came to DKU not to gain a, a narrow mastery of a single subject, but to develop broad capacities and strengths of mind. You chose a university that aims to make its students active participants in the work of understanding, not just passive recipients of what others already know. You chose a place based on the ideal not of solitary achievement, but of a community of people collaborating on their way to understanding, uh, bringing members in across the widest array of cultural backgrounds so that you can learn to see how other people see and learn how to uh, build the things together that no one of you could ever build alone. You came here, in short, to develop yourself into someone who could be an active shaper of the life of your times in the many fields in which the world uh, uh, will need creative intelligence. And the disruption, that was regrettable, but that was education too. When nothing could continue as planned, you didn't just throw up your hands or burst into tears or uh, go home. Maybe you did all three. Drawing instead, drawing on the collective ingenuity of the DKU community, you envisioned plan B and then as necessary plan C and then as necessary plan D. In short, you used your imagination to figure out how to pursue an unchanged goal through the ever-changing circumstances that seemed designed to uh, derail your journey. This will not be the least valuable strength you learned in the past four years. The world you're going to have your lives in is not going to be a steady state. It's going to be a scene of endless transformation, full of upheaval and permutation, where even the best plans uh, quickly grow obsolete and where the shape of the future won't be fully known until it has uh, uh, take, taken place. Who's going to be able to succeed in a world like that? There is an answer. Men and women who combine deep reserves of knowledge and well-developed skills of creative adaptation, plus some courage, plus commitment to their goals. Thanks to both what we did plan and what we never could and never would have planned during your four years at DKU, you are such a person today. I've often heard it said that Chinese culture attaches high importance to luck or good fortune. On the day of your graduation, I wish you luck. As they say in the USA, I wish you all the luck in the world. But luck is an external and a fickle ally, and your education has given you something that's actually far better than luck. It has given you the inner resources to help make better outcomes for yourself and others, whatever the world throws at you by way of circumstances. Every part of the globe needs good people to help make a better world for all. Go do your part. Thank you and congratulations.